Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be implementing assignment expressions in our programming language. So let's get started. Uh, but first, I want to mention a mess up I did in the previous episode on um, constants and variable declarations. And that is that we need to actually pass um, that these constant variables in our global scope are actually constants. So right, we pass true to say that yes, these are indeed um, constants. So that's just one thing to make sure. Um, I'm surprised I missed it in the last episode, but yes, we need to actually say that we don't want someone to be able to assign true, false, and null. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, let's get started implementing probably one of the easier things to implement, and that is assignment expressions. So currently, if we actually try to run our code that we're trying to test, we do dno run dash a main.ts, and we try saying like let x is equal to 45. That works, right? x divided by 2. We see this is all working. However, we can't do something like now x is equal to um, x plus 1, right? Unexpected token founds during parsing equals. So let's now actually go ahead and implement that uh, parsing. So before, what we have to do as always is define our AST node. So down here in the expressions, we are going to define a uh, expression type called assignment expr as per usual. Okay, so now let's actually go ahead and implement this assignment expression. So down here, we're going to export interface uh, assignment expr, which extends, right, an expression. Cool. So now that we have this, we want to say it has a kind of assignment expr, like so. Um, sorry, you have to add a semicolon there. So it has a kind of assignment expression. It's going to have an assignee, which is going to be an expression, and a value, which is going to be an expression. Why? Why is the assignee an expression and not simply just a string? Well, it won't matter for this video, but in the next few videos when we implement objects and things like that, this is actually going to be a really crucial thing. Um, and this is kind of tricky. So an assignment expression, right, in JavaScript, I can kind of think of two separate expressions. I could say something like let x is equal to some object, right, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, foo. Now again, our language doesn't support objects, not yet at least, but this is an assignment expression, right? We have x is equal to, the left-hand side is the assignee. It's an identifier though, right? So why don't we just call it a string? Well, it's because later on, if we want to do x dot foo is equal to um, foo bar, right? Well, now we actually want to be able to support this. And the issue is this is not an identifier. This is what we call a member expression, AKA it is another complex expression. So hope that kind of clears up why we don't just use assignment as a string on the left-hand side. It's because we want to support complex expressions like x dot foo dot um, bar dot something like that, right? We want to be able to do things like this or x of foo is equal to this. This is again, why we need to have expression as the left-hand side for the assignee. So let's go ahead and get started implementing this in the parser. So we have an assignment expression. Let's head on over to the parser and actually go ahead and implement this. Currently we have in our parse statement, right? We have, if we have a variable declaration and then we go into parse expression, let's go into parse expression and see what's happening. Currently we just go straight to additive expressions. However, um, maybe what we'll want to do instead is actually parse a assignment expression. So instead we're going to call parse assignment expression like so. Now, the reason why we want to actually do an assignment expression here, and the reason why it gets more precedence, so to say, over a um, additive is actually that this doesn't. Remember, the further down in the call stack, right, the more precedence it has. For example, parse additive has less precedence than parse multiplicative, which then parse multiplicative calls parse primary, again, right? The order of precedence is the lower in the call track, call stack is actually the more precedence it has. So a variable assignment has very little precedence actually. It's actually the lowest precedence operator we're gonna be dealing with, right? Why? Because you can do let x, or sorry, um, x is equal to foo is equal to bar, right? This is an assignment expression. This has lower precedence than the foo and the bar, right? So this is why we need to give it 
plus precedence. Okay, so an f exponential, let's quickly implement this. We're going to do const left, because again, we want to parse the expression, but we don't know for a fact if we're at a token type of equals. So we're just going to do parse, um, what is it? It is an additive expression for now. In the future, we'll actually switch this out with objects. And that'll actually be in the next coming episodes. So stay tuned if you want to know how to implement objects. Right. So currently we have the left hand side, which is an expression, right? So if we had again, right, um, x is equal to 45, what we would get back is a left hand side of an identifier right here. But now we need to check if we're at an equal token, right? So we're going to do if, um, if this dot at dot type is equal to token type dot equals, right? Then we know we're at an equal token, so we're going to want to handle it. What we're going to do um, is we're going to say this dot eats, right? Advance past the equal token we just found. Then what we want to do is we want to actually get access to the right hand side, right? So we have the left, we have the equals, now we need the right. So we're going to do const rhs is equal to, uh, actually we're just going to call it uh, value, is equal to this dot parse. And what we want to do is parse an assignment expression again, right? Because we want to allow chaining, right? So x is equal to foo is equal to bar. Right, we want to allow chaining like this. So we're going to allow it to chain like so. So now we have a let x and an equals and a value. Now we just do return object value um, assign me is of type left, right? And the kind is of type uh, assignment expression as assignment expression like so. Uh, I am getting an error. So what did I mess up? Um, oh, it's because I spelled assignee wrong. A S S I I G N E. There we go. Right. So now we've handled the case of if this is an assignment expression, but we still need to handle the case of if this was just right some other expression. We just do return left like so, and now we've implemented assignment expressions. So let's quickly go ahead and give this a test. So we're going to do uh, Dino run main, we're going to do let x equals 45, have a semicolon, and now let's try saying x is equal to 50. And currently we see uncaught error method not implemented, and then we get um, left. And this is actually not from where I was expecting it. This is from method not implemented left, which is inside of parse assignment expression line 152. So let's kind of see quickly where this is coming from, right? So uh, what we have here is we eat our equal token, beautiful. Then we actually, oh, do I, did I call this? Ah, I called, I see, I see, I see. I see, I see what's happening, right? I called, I changed our parse expression, expression instead of putting the right code in the right place. I've done this twice already, oof. Um, currently, we're just going to return parse assignment expression. Sorry about that. And in here, we're going to implement right our actual assignment expression. There we go. I can already tell that. I was like, that error does not make any sense. We will get an error, but it'll be an error that we actually defined. Right. So now we're going to do let x equals 45. Cool. x is equal to 5. Ah, there we go. This is... AST node has not yet been set up for interpretation, right? And it's of type um, kind, assignment expression. The assignee is an identifier of x, and the value is a numeric of 5. So this seems to be working. Let's test out x is equal to 45 divided by 2. And we can also see, right, the assignee assignment, right, x is equal to a binary operation, 45 divided by 2. So that looks beautiful. Now let's actually go ahead and implement um, our assignment evaluation, right? So inside of the runtime, let's go into the interpreter section and let's define um, a function that's gonna help us with assignment evaluation. So inside of the eval, we're gonna open our expressions uh, file. I'm gonna get rid of the eval binary, eval identifier, and we're gonna create a new function called export function eval assignments. It's going to take in the, uh, the 
uh, node, which is going to be um, an assignment expression, the current environment, like so. And the return type is, again, going to be a runtime value, as all expressions return a value. Um, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is we have our assignment expression, right? We have our node in our environment. We have everything we need to make an assignment. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually check that the um, the node, right? Node dot assignee dot kind is a identifier because currently that's the only thing we allow an assignment to, right? You can't do a binary expression equal something, a numeric equal something. You can't assign four to five, right? Currently, we only support identifiers. So let's actually check for that first. If node.assignee.kind is not equal to, and we're going to check for an identifier, then we're going to throw an error, right? Throw row um, cannot assign um, with LHS. Uh, we'll just do invalid in. inside of the expression. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm literally just gonna do, um, we're just gonna do a JSON dot uh, stringify of the node dot assignee, like so. There we go, so now we've handled the case if it's not an identifier. In the future, we'll actually check for objects, but for now, that's all we need to do. Cool, now what we wanna do is we simply want to make an assignment. So we're gonna do return um, env dot assign variable, right? It takes in the variable name and the new value. So the variable name is node dot assignee. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just cast it down here. So we're going to do const uh, var name is equal to node dot assignee. Right. I'm going to do this as a um, an identifier dot the symbol like so. So this is going to give us the string representation of our name, right? Um, and now we just pass in of our name. And then now we need to pass the value. So the default value is going to be um, node dot value. Well, kind of, right? Currently, um, the value that's going to get passed into our assignments is we need a runtime value. However, this is an expression, right? So what do we do? We evaluate it. So we evaluate node.value, we pass in our environments, and there we go. Now we're able to assign to a variable with a value. And the reason this succeeds, right, is if we define something as constant in our previous episode, we set a constants pool right here. So we have a set containing all of our constants, and the assigned variable will actually throw an error if the variable name is defined as constant. So this will work. Now, um, and then we just return the value we just assigned to, and this allows that chaining stuff, right? So if you assign the value you just assigned, you can allow chaining. So there we go. Now let's actually go ahead and import this in, um, not our parser, import this in our interpreter. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to handle, right by binary, I'm going to do it, uh, case assignment expression, and we're going to do return eval um, assignment. And we're going to pass in the node as an assignment expression, and then the environment, like so. Oh, and it's not node, it's AST node, like so. Okay, now let's actually give this a shot and see if this works. So make sure our terminal is cleared. We're going to do dno run. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable that's a constant first. We're going to call it foo is equal to 45. Right, now let's see if I can assign it. I should get an error. Right, so x is equal, or sorry, foo is equal to 5. Let's try it, and there we go. Error cannot reassign foo as it was declared constant, so that seems to be working. Let's try let x equals 45. Um, x is equal to x plus 1, and we can see x is now 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, etc., etc., etc. We can also assign to a different type. x is equal to true. And now we get the value. If we type x, right, we get type of boolean value. True. So that seems to be working very well. Now let's go ahead and try creating another variable. Let um, bar is equal to foo divided by 2. 
and we should get an error because right um, variable statement oh it's actually not the error I was expecting let's foo is equal to true right let's bar is equal to foo divided by two and we'd expect to get an error right because type null etc etc we can't do binary operations like this and so now let's try an assignment of let x let y let z not let there we go right so we get x y z they're all nulls however we can now do x is equal to 45 um is x is equal to y is equal to z which is equal to 55 and now we can see what x is y is and z are all the same so this is really cool it seems that we now have variable declarations and assignments working in our language in the next episode we're going to implement um, something really cool we're going to be able to write expressions in um, objects right so we're going to be able to do something like const person is equal to right name is well i guess since we don't support strings we won't have strings yet but we'll be able to do something like this right we'll be able to pass in values like so we'll also define a shorthand syntax so um foo we could do foo like this but we'll support shorthand syntax where you can just pass um a value like so and it'll work so in the next episode, we'll actually implement right, the assignments of um, uh, objects. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget, uh, you can join our community Discord server. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to assist you there. In the meantime, I'll talk to you later.